Hataraku Chocobo represented a number of firsts for me. Not only was it my first game in the Chocobo series, which I very much hope to return to as a Final Fantasy fan who's already had my fun with the RPGs, and also my first ever game on the Wonder Swan Color, which is a handheld console I've never heard of anyone owning, and which recently had a wave of fan-translated games uploaded to CD Romance. But Working Chocobo is also the first game I've ever played in its genre, which I'm not sure actually exists outside of this game. Going into this game, I expected something like Harvest Moon but with Chocobo, which is only very slightly the case. Actually, it's a game where you play as a rancher who finds wild Chocobo, brings them into their barn, then gives them a job, and sets them to work in the fields in exchange for food, water, and board. In terms of gameplay input, it's amazingly simple. Each stage starts you off in the middle of a 3x3 grid of varied terrain. You can assign each of your chocobo either to till fields and plant crops, gather water, chop down trees to gather wood, or mine ore. The food and water you need to retain your growing stable of chocobo, though you can only take three of them with you after each stage is done, and the other resources are used to build the barrels that house your water and the fences around your food. Honestly, there's a bunch of mechanics in this game that weren't totally explained and which I didn't fully come to grasp in the hours that I spent playing it. Even having beaten the first stage on my first try, for reasons that I'll get into shortly, I ended up playing through the first stage another two times before I felt like I understood the mechanics on display enough to actually proceed through the game with confidence. Assigning jobs to your chocobo and placing them around is simple enough, as each different color of bird has its own preference of environment, and each square of terrain has its own specific resources that are in abundance. Only three chocobo can be stationed at each of the eight locations, which shouldn't seem like a problem when you only start off each level with three birds and usually just collect a few more by the end of the stage. However, what complicates the game is that you are also in constant competition against three NPCs. So the way that the actual levels work in this game is almost like a board game. The first level follows you through four years of harvest, meaning four turns for you and each NPC. After each turn, all of you harvest your resources at the end of the year and then meet up with a guy who will give you the opportunity to trade what you've gathered for other resources that you need urgently and also to bid for certain items in an auction that starts on the second level. This aspect of the game starts off a little bit confusing and ends up taking a lot of game time since it involves the most critical thought behind your decision making of possibly any mechanic, and it goes on for kind of a while between each round, but the tactical decision making possible in the bidding wars is pretty interesting. For instance, if you bid for an item up to the point where you would have to make a bid you don't want to, and then you pass, chances are that you at least raised the price of what your opponents had to bid in order to win that item. So you're draining their resources. Each round also has a time limit, though I couldn't totally figure out what controls how much time you have because it changes based on your resources, but basically you want to make the most important decisions first and then see how much more you can get away with in each round, or else end it early and save your resources. Aside from catching wild chocobos, assigning them jobs, and placing them in locations, you can also take the chance to move one of the chocobo that you've placed before, or to talk to other people's chocobos in order to distract them. As the years go on, all of the chocobo tilling, chopping, and mining will steadily deplete the areas, meaning that you want to move them around when there's nothing left in the spot that they're at. And that pretty much summarizes the gameplay. It's very straightforward, and it doesn't ask you to keep track of so much that it gets stressful. Though it can be easy to forget some of the hidden things like that certain resources spoil if they aren't used too quickly, and that chocobo will run away from you if you don't have enough food and water at the end of the year. There's also some kind of rule about an item that you need to find in order to give a chocobo a job but I stayed confused about what that item was or how to get it, and sometimes it felt random when I could or couldn't assign jobs, or like I just needed to have a chocobo around for a few turns and then I could do it. I'm sure I was overlooking something, but I never figured out what. Mainly, if I have complaints about this game, it's that the audiovisual design doesn't really evolve from level to level. The music is delightful, coming from Shimamura Yoko-san, who also scored all of the Mario RPGs, all of the Kingdom Hearts games, and Final Fantasy XV, among many others. But there are only a couple of songs, and they become repetitive quickly. I wouldn't say I got sick of it per se, but if you don't like chipper, Pokemon-esque, jaunty chiptune music, you'll want to mute this one. 
Visually, when I got to the fourth level and found that the landscapes were still pretty much the same, with levels only really changing in which landscapes they feature in combination, I started to feel like there wasn't really much mystery left in the game, except in learning its mechanics well enough to master them. Hataraku Chocobo is the epitome of an easy-to-play, hard-to-master type of game. In order to actually complete each stage, all that's required is that you have a big enough yield to earn a certain number of medals, which is a usually pretty low threshold. Like I said before, I cleared the first level's expectation of two medals on my first try, even though I spent a while just figuring out what the hell I was even doing. However, I had also come in last place as compared to the three NPCs I was competing with. It's because of the uncertainty I felt at losing to them that I replayed the level twice until I had come in at least second place just to be sure I actually understood the mechanics. Realizing things like that you would want to secure water and food first so that you can grow your chocobo count before expanding the ability to get more water and food was the right rhythm to start with, and by the time I made it to level 4, I was climbing clowning on the NPCs and getting first place first try. Consider that Hataraku Chocobo is intended as a handheld game, and I think it serves its purpose very well. The levels are just right length and commitment and they save after each year, so it's easy enough to put down and pick up, but also just compelling enough to fill a commute or long toilet visit or something. If I had ever actually owned a physical Wonderswan color and had this game when it released in 2000, I could imagine maintaining just enough investment to chip away at it bit by bit over time until I had beaten it. As a game that you marathon on a PC emulator, it's not compelling enough to keep me wanting to go back to it for hours on end, mostly just for how repetitive it starts to feel after a couple of levels. I think this game would be a great comfy game for anybody that's just looking to cycle in something they can pluck away at happily for an hour or so a night until it's done, and then probably forget about it for the most part. If you think this game looks interesting based on my description, I would encourage you to give it a shot. It's kind of hard to go wrong or really be disappointed if you weren't put off by how actually bizarre the gameplay loop is. Anyone that clicks with this game should have no trouble enjoying it, and so I'm glad that it's been given at least a fan translation, even if it's a little bit difficult to parse in some places at first. I had been really drawn to even just the aesthetic of the text boxes, and of course the cuteness of the Chocobo, but I suspect that this won't be my favorite game in the whole of the Chocobo series. If you've got a game in that series, or any cute, weird, simplistic games in general that you think I would enjoy, let me know about them in the comments, and check out my videos on games like Harmful Park, Arquista's Ring, and Diddy Kong Racing, which I've put out in recent months. Subscribe to goldenwitch.substack.com for bonus articles and podcasts, or get them by supporting patreon.com slash goldenwitchfire. Find me at goldenwitchfire on all social media and payment platforms, and thanks again for watching. And always remember to never forget all these cool little cute fun adorable old games. <laughs>